on this episode of Lapeef, let's talk. So that's why I said this this question is different based on what stage we are in our lives. Yeah, it really isn't because dudes are. Uh, of course not. Again, uh, you right. Should not be. <laughs> they should not be. They should not be leading. You got forgot you had all your shit together when you was twenty. Let me, you know, I, so the thing really is, did. that's why I was. Uh, I, yeah, made, I know I you did. My, I didn't. I, I made my. I didn't. I really. I got to the bag. And here's the key, though. Yeah, I, key, I didn't. Though. So I don't speak to no, so, no your type of people. Here's I don't speak to. I'm not here to validate anybody, though. I'm here to talk to you. Welcome to oh, damn Let me clock, ain't it? <laughs> if you're just joining us, we move on to our last and final topic of the night, which is: Is potential enough in a relationship? Is potential enough in relationships ashley i would say it depends on what type of potential you're talking about and it also depends on like your age you know like your age and where you are in your life when i'm when i was 22 you know it was okay if you lived at home and like it was okay if you just hadn't had some things figured out if fast forward to 34 you know, I got questions now. <laughs> if you still living at home or, you know, I need to know some background or like, so it depends on what type of potential you're talking about too. Um, Cause nobody's gonna be perfect, but like some things you can't date on potential, you know, like you gotta look at their patterns. You gotta look at their history, look at who they are. Like, yeah, they could change and grow, but you gotta kind of look at like, there you do have to look at their past a lot some people don't care about past but past to me reveals patterns and it says a lot about a person most people don't change that much um and i mean not saying you should hold their past against them but there are you gotta you can't just be dating for potential um but like i said it depends on what type of potential so like some people some people like we're all working on something, right? So if you see a p potential in that person to change some aspect about themselves, like maybe it's losing weight, like eating, um, having a healthier lifestyle, you know, that's something you might say, oh, okay, I see this person really is trying. This person is making some lifestyle changes. You know, this person might be a little heavier now, but I see that they are moving towards something better. So that type of potential, yeah. But it really just depends on what type of potential you're talking about. Like there are some women and men, I guess, who date people who are just kind of like, they don't have a lot of focus in life. They're doing a whole lot of things that are destructive. So it's like, that's not the type of potential that you need to be kind of investing in, I don't think. Tawana. Actually, you know what? You so nice. You are <laughs> really, really nice. You nice girl. I like you. You okay. nice. You, you way nice. nicer than Anton <laughs> and me. Hey Tawana, is potential yeah. enough in relationships? Potential is always a gamble. I don't date potential because I'm just not, I'm just in a different place in my life. I just need you to be established in who you are and where you at. And, you know, obviously if there's room to grow, if that's what you mean by potential. Like there's room for that person to grow in life later. Great. But I do need to be with the person who you are in the present moment. And I need to be accepting of that person. I don't want to date you and then hope that you become something different later on because that is the wrong uh approach in my opinion never works out it's just always a gamble and yes yeah, sometimes it does work out for the best you know michelle obama dated the intern but look he became president <laughs> like I, I mean sometimes it does work they out for the best. I, I, they were much younger and I think but he like, was already on the way to be. He was always on the way. But, what I'm saying is, but she was already in her role. So what I'm saying is, you you know, sometimes people do see the potential and then they be like, you know, OK, this person can potentially be something that I. So I'm not saying that you can't date someone who is not exactly in the place that you want them to be. If you see that they have room to grow. 
but I don't date someone who is totally missing key elements that I find value to or think is important. I'm just at a place in my life where charity cases are not attractive to me. I don't have time to work on your <laughs> work on developing you, but I think that some women love to do that. But I, I just I don't. And um, yeah, so nope, potential is not enough for me. Anton, is potential enough in relationships? Uh, no, I don't believe in that, bro. I think that, as a matter of fact, I believe that some people is too broke to be dating. Yo, you you can't even. <laughs> you need to, you ain't got time to be thinking about chicks, bro. You should stop chasing chicks and start chasing checks. Like, it, it, okay, even if you did get her, what you what you gonna do with her, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you can't do nothing with her. Ain't nothing, ain't nothing you can do for it. She, she don't align with you. She not even on your level, bro. You you are in a space to where very soon you're going to be emasculated because you don't even feel like the man you're supposed to be. And very much so because you ain't the man you're supposed to be yet. You need to get yourself together, fam. Stop focusing on the things that's not, not actually bringing any value to your life. You got to understand, you need to become the, ver- the best version of you and then everything else get added in addition to that. It's not about potential. I'm not I'm not rocking with potential, fam, because for every Obama, it's a hundred dudes that's still in their 40s trying to be rappers talking about I'm gonna make it one day. Fam, I'm gonna need you to get a job, I'm gonna need you to get some benefits, I'm gonna need you to get an education, I'm gonna need you to get yourself together and take care of your family and stop stop being out here living on a limb. Because ain't nobody you got don't know time my to life. Be you don't potential. know my life. <laughs> you speak into my life like for real. I dated somebody who was trying Don't to be a, a rapper. Guy, <laughs> and, and 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 it's 24 hours in a day, which means that whatever that potential thing is that you think is going to blow, I'm going to need you to do that in your spare time. I'm going to need you to do that after five o'clock. But from nine to five, I'm going to need you to clock in and get yourself a job and get you some benefits. Because ain't nobody got time to be dating potential. That's dead. But the fact that I had to tell him that is the problem. Like, why do I have to tell you that you need a real job? Like, you can't pursue music forever. Like, but, you know, how do you even get back right after you have to tell somebody that? And I was younger, more flexible in my thinking, I guess, as as Ashley's point. Uh, (laughs) You know, obviously you get older. It's like, no, I ain't got time for that. Be next. Is potential enough in relationships? You know what, Anton? I hate when you speak. I think, I and I'm care. putting Andrea in the same category. I think both of y'all, y'all, y'all are different. You know, yeah. like y'all, y'all think about life from a very absolute aspect. And the thing is, you know, everybody don't got money. You know, and the thing is, it's one of those like, it. Uh, you know, I always said this before. It makes the pursuit of dating and being with somebody so transactional. The thing is, I want to say the my initial lead in was going to be the realest question would have been if you date on potential, how long do you wait for somebody to pursue their dream on their potential? Because I think we all date people off what could be right. The potential that we see in somebody. So I can't say that, you know what, when you see someone, you see a potential of what you could see as far as your future with this person, or you see something in them that resonates with you. So I can't sit up here and say, you don't see no potential, right? It's very absolute. It's not. So the thing is, it's more so about how long, like we jokingly speaking, Tawana, we mentioned about the rapper and things like that. Like, (laughs) hey, we all got dreams, right? So the thing is, it's more so I think people need to be uh, mindful about how long am I willing to allow someone to say that, you know what? I'm cool with you living out your dream and this potential, but when is this actualized into becoming something concrete? The thing is, I think it's um, like, like you mentioned, Ashley, it's also the stage and where we're at in our lives. I think when you're in a certain age group, you do have that. We date different. Uh, like, let's be honest. We date different. We have different uh, value system versus in our twenties versus in our thirties. I think in our thirties, a little bit of what you're saying, Anton, you should be established. But I think you're speaking to people as if they don't have jobs at all. The part is that I think you're talking about far as securing the bag. There are people that just will not make 100K, you know, ever. But they are working. Right. That's why we call them the working class. But this is why dating is so messed up, because now, unless I am able to achieve a certain dollar, we allow the dollar to define what type of person 
layer I, thing. I, then you changing the narrative because you're no, not, it's, then it's not. It's not potential, right? Because we talking about no, we talking about potential earnings, potential, potential skill set. It's different types matter. of potential. You're but, looking but, at it just from that. one aspect of potential. No, 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 no. You change so the narrative. So explain when you define potential. What the aspects of potential? Is based potential, off of potential. Is broad. Say it again. The question is based off potential, not based off of what your reality is. That's the question. Is dating based off of potential? Can you date based off of potential? Well, if you want to just because that makes it a now yes no answer. So the thing is, it would be yes. I do believe that you can't date someone off potential. It's more so about how long are you willing to allow to go your, yourself to be allowed to go through the dating phase because is this something that you see yourself going into the next level so i think you can date someone off potential we all have potential on what we foresee in ourselves and in the person that we date sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't that's the art of dating we all date around because we do see potential in people that we want to date it's something that resonates with us so we can't sit up here and say and like the fact that you up here talking about the like, well, people shouldn't date. That means like half the people shouldn't be dating right now, which you will probably agree that that actually would be a good thing if people didn't date. But we're all human beings, bro. Everybody dates. We all have a sense of wanting to belong to someone. So I can't sit up here and say that, you know what, just because I haven't reached the potential of what somebody else deems as reaching that ceiling of potential that level of judgment, I think that that's a poor place to start a relationship. But that's why certain people date certain type of people. We definitely have different views on how we enter relationships. Because now it's like, isn't it, we're not even talking about whether we want to be with that person. The potential, yeah, but it's like we can't sit up here and act like the shit ain't organic, that we don't have vibes for people that we just want to be with them. You're saying like, well, yeah, but that ain't the point because they ain't got their shit together. And Define got their stuff together, Anton. So if they don't got, if they shouldn't be dating, then, okay, what about people who are working, but they are working class citizens? Should they not date? If they no, okay, so, let me, so let me ask you a question. Let's, let's, let me ask you a question. Should, should Michelle Obama, let's just say hypothetically her and Barack get divorced, should she bait based off of the possibility that somebody else can meet her expectations or should she find somebody that's more closely aligned with where she already is? I think it depends on where Michelle was at in her life at that point. No, no, no. I said now. Let's say her and Barack get divorced. Mm -hmm. Should she bait based off of potential or should she date based off of where she already is in her life it's very clear man michelle like what about 50. so i want to say it is very absolute. Role? you are dating someone that is kind of more so a peer in your peer group you know what i mean but i feel like as, if you date younger we date different type of people in our 20s because the thing is, you want to have someone that does have a car, does have a job, does have benefits. You think I'm not thinking about benefits when I'm in my 20s. So that's why I said this this question is different based on what stage we are in our lives. Yeah, it really isn't because dudes are. Uh, of course not. Again, uh, you right. Should not be you they should not be. They should not be leading. You got forgot. You had all your shit together when you was 20. Let me, you know, I, so the thing really is, did. that's why I was up. Uh, I, yeah, made, I know I you did. My, I didn't. I, I made my. I didn't. I really. I got to the bag. And here's the key, though. Yeah, I, key, I didn't. Though. So I don't speak to no, no, your here's type of people. Here's I don't speak to. I'm not here to validate anybody, though. I'm here to talk to you. Yeah. And the, and the, and the key to this conversation is so, that. He, oh no! Stop! 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 Your stop, truth. Stop! 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 No. The key to your truth. Conversation is that if a young dude in his twenties see this, what do you want to take? What do you want him to take from it? And I would say. Don't listen to be next because he's just trying to make you feel good about yourself. What you should be I didn't doing. Know that was a bad thing. Stop, 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 stop. What you should be doing is doing the work, Bram, bro. Get to the bag, take care of your business, become the man that you're supposed to be, and understand that all the other stuff come along with it. And ain't never gonna be a shortage of chicks. You don't have to put a time limit on yourself of whether or not you're gonna meet the right one. You can be in a space to where you get to the thing that actually adds value to your life and become the best version of you understanding that there's some woman that's going to come in and fill a specific type of role based off of where you see yourself going. Stop trying to push people into filling 
something good about themselves and get on the other side of being uncomfortable because that's where the growth is. Stop listening to people that's trying to validate you and get to the bag, man. Stop listening to this. Stuff, man. That's what I, I want. No, man. I, I don't even know how to respond to what you just said. Like, it's I just think different. It's it's good advice to tell a young man, like, look, don't fo fo focus on girls, don't focus on trying to have relationships until you kind of get, you know, walk, until you're walking into your purpose. Um, but the truth of the matter, though, is like, it's just not realistic. Like, you know, these young boys are, or young men in their early 20s, like, they're not going to not be out here with women like they're gonna be out here dating and they ain't gonna be abstinent like most of them not so they might not be trying to be in a serious relationship but most 20 my old young bulls is not dating none, not. Of my, none of my none of my young bulls that i'm in towards dating they out getting to the bag okay that's what? good guess you and your crew and and time, guess what? One group of guess, that what? About. The, guess what the greater they become the higher the the higher the value of women that they attract they not worried on trying to validate themselves. You know, themselves you know this this is my issue. Ashley, right? but I still think we, we still hey, Oh, Ashley, I'm it. sorry. Go ahead. I, yeah. I apologize. Go ahead. I was just responding to Ashley. I think we still gotta keep preaching say, it, even though even though most I agree, I agree with him and Yeah. Yeah, we know. Um, of course you do. <laughs> but yeah, like, that's because you that's because you awesome. That's because you awesome, baby girl. Ashley, go ahead. To keep preaching it though. We gotta keep preaching it, Ashley. I mean, I mean, even though, I even though like the young men are not are not doing it, hopefully some of them will grasp it. They're just like adults. Adults do the same thing. You can you can get them free game. You can have like 12, 13 people in one room and only like two people gonna do it. But you keep mm -hmm. doing it. There's just two more people that are wised up. I take it. Yeah. So I gotta say this really quick. I've been an entrepreneur for over 10 years. And um over the years, I've dated guys that wanted me to have a job because I don't get a paycheck every Friday, every other week, or et cetera. They what? wanted me to, yeah, they wanted me to go to work. They want to call me on lunch break, X, Y, Z, and I, I've always been able to do my own thing. So um, if when I date, men are like, um, so me and I've dated have wanted me to just be on a schedule. What? I'm not on a schedule. They want me to do what they wanted me to do. Stay in the house, go to work, nine to five, get a paycheck, have I don't know how much people with jobs paid XYZ amount of money that the way they know that I have this amount of money in my bank account every week that makes them uh, comfortable so I can pay the bill on Friday when we go eat. That's another story. Be Nick. <laughs> <laughs> that was another story. But when men date me, you can't date the potential because I'm already potentially there. Like I'm already dope as hell. I already have, you know, I'm already the shit. Even if I'm not where I'm going, I'm on the way. Now, when I date, I have to make sure another man is on the way too. Of course, I could date a man with a nice job at a factory, and he is, he is, you know, he got so much potential. But if we're forty something years old, which I am, and he has potential to be on his way, that's not the man I'm a date because he was not for me. I'm tired of training these men. I'm trying to raise these. I'm tired of raising these men. I have a young son that's about to be 22. He's a fucking genius. I don't even have to raise him. So why I got to raise a nigga that I'm fucking? I can't do it. Period. I don't even know, like, the, the group of people y'all talking about. I mean, y'all y'all just, I get what you're say, saying, Andrea, what? but to me, it's like, Y'all are shutting yourselves out from just like regular people. Like y'all are speaking to a specific group of people, which I understand they do exist, but I don't think that's a significant percent. It's like it, 
stuff like this is why people don't like dating because it removes the the the, the joy and the organic feeling of getting to know people because now it becomes like I'm just focusing on what you're able to bring. It becomes this transaction, this finance. Because the thing is, people assume that based on what you've done with your career, that defines what type of person you are as far as your personality, how you're able to have a conversation, all that. Like people lead with that. And that's the part I don't get it. Like it's not about the accolades and stuff, man. That's cool, but I'm not leading with that. And that's the part that makes dating so challenging because people feel like because I have these credentials, then this makes me you know, the person you need to date, that I'm absolute. And the thing is now becomes a challenge where it's hard to have a conversation because folks know everything already, right? Nobody doesn't want to feel like they're in a relationship where they're being told like, hey, well, you need to, you know, be do this. You need to do that. So I think just think we date differently. So I'm not saying it in a disrespectful way, but I think that y'all speaking to a certain population of people that is not the majority. That's all, both of y'all. <laughs> you laughing at that comment, um, girl. Andre, <laughs> there's, level, there's levels to this, bro. I think, this. I think, right, I think right. We was raised was different, bro. Tawana, yes. first of all, let me, let me just say this. I'm a very submissive woman. I cook, I clean, I do what my men says. I can tell. I can tell. But I, but I don't have a man. Okay, the reason why I don't have a man is because even though I've been talking all this shit on this podcast, I don't date. I say to myself, all I do is work. JR, La Peace, we don't know each other that well, but he knows. I do not date. All I do is work. I don't go out on dates. I don't go out for dinner. I don't do any of that. I don't have to. I'm a whole gourmet motherfucker chef in his bitch. I got a son that's about to be 22 years old. He's a genius. He's a motherfucking musician. He plays 22 instruments. He's listening right now. He know his mama, G. Period. You know do what you, I'm saying? Um, do, you so want I, to, do you want to have a relationship, though? Or is that your goal I, one day? Do I you do want to be in a relationship? I do want to have a relationship, but honestly, I and afraid. I'm afraid men scare me sometimes. Why? I've been abused. I I used to bartend for like over 20 years. I've had a man bust my head. I've been domestically abused. I've been to jail from a man putting their hands on me and I wound up going to jail. So I'm really loving and light and I talk a lot of shit, but I don't really be out here fucking and dating at all. I had me uh, a pandemic partner. I've been knowing that man for five, six years. So it wasn't a new man I was fucking. That was that was like, let me finally get his nigga some pussy. Let me just finally do this. You know what I'm saying? So I do not go out with men that I don't know. I do I do not be outside and talk to men that I don't know. Like if I'm outside in the grocery store, a man, I was at the grocery store today. A man was like, hey, I was buying food and liquor. But tonight, so <laughs> he was like, you know, can I, can I buy your drink next time? And he was walking up to me outside my car. Me, I'm about to pull out on him because his car jacks all types of stuff. I got an old car. You can't car jack me. I don't want you to car jack me, my car, everything. But I'm literally afraid. Like, I'm about to pull my gun out on this man. Like, can I buy you a drink next time? No. <laughs> Most bitches would have been like, sure. No, I'm not for none of that. I was raised with my grandmother. I'm hella submissive, but you got to be submissive to the right man. None of these men out here, my husband, I ain't got no husband. I'm not dating right now. I ain't got no man. I'm, I live alone. You know what I'm saying? So men always want you to be submissive. How can I be submissive to a man? who don't even know how to be good to themselves. So you have to be good to yourself. I'm good to myself. You got to be good to yourself. You got mommy issues, daddy issues. You don't want to get therapy, but now you come into the relationship and you want me to fix you. Tired of raising these men. I'm these men. And I want to say other words, but I'm being very nice. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired. 
you know, I'm raising a whole adult son to be a man, a gentleman, you know? Well, I think that, I think that to men's point is that, you know, you have already determined what you want in life, right? Like you already have got into a comfort zone where you're not willing to bend or be flexible or do these things. And that's what men are afraid of when women get to a certain age is that there is a lot of, you know, Tawana, you there? <laughs> like, yeah, she froze, bro. <laughs> she yeah, was yeah. on it. She was on it, and you just gonna mess her up. I ain't mess her up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we're gonna go ahead and bring this to a close. And uh, I appreciate you guys for sitting in, Ashley and Andrea tonight. Andrea, what you? You look like you got something to say. Go on ahead, yeah, get it out off your chest. <laughs> what I want to say was Ashley. Girl, you are the bomb. You are such a male manner, but very outspoken, like beautiful person. You like oh, totally. And be nice to for real. Like I love your I love you both of you guys' personality, period. You know, I love it. You know, hey, yeah, you, you definitely got an energy about you, Andrea. <laughs> yeah. Love you, you you, you bring out a different side of me, honestly. I don't use y'all like being more chill, but I don't even know why I got loud like a I while back. Care. But you, you trigger me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, you made me care. You made me care about raising my voice. <laughs> Yeppiness, I, I haven't seen you get that anger and loss. This show kind of irritated you today. You were you were like. No, it was enough with Anton, but then somebody that has similar mindset as him, I was like, oh man. Two? But see, let me let me say this though. I don't agree with that. I don't think that they have similar mindset. Because her mindset is totally different from what Anton. He is like more traditional. His values are more set. She's outspoken yeah. and vocal, but yeah. she, for them, they do not have similar mindsets. I disagree completely. I think that she does understand him and agree with him in a lot of cases. But even when she speaks about her position, it's totally separate from what he's saying. Okay. I, you know what? Yeah, you're good, right. Good, you're right. good point. Yeah. I agree with that. I hate when y'all be comparing people that ain't compare. Like y'all always try to compare somebody to Ed. He, he got his own vibes, <laughs> but it is very different from a lot of people's views. Not because he's not because he's a bad person, because he's he's just very traditional. He he grew up in an environment where it was customary to be married. It was customary to you know have a head of household in the house. Like it, you, you don't, you can't help but think that way when that is what you, his grandfather, his father, all his predecessors, they've all been married and they all had this relationship. So it, of course his experience is going to represent that. Of course his views and his opinions are going to represent that. Me and me and B Nick sound like we came from, you know, both from broken homes, maybe from different type of environments. And we've seen a, a variety of different people. So my, my experiences is going to be based on that. In my perspective, in my view, and high value men represent three percent of the population. So we talking to a small segment of people. I mean, most men are like B Nicks. Most men are like that. That's who he represents. The average man. He does, Anton does not represent the average man. Anton represents a small segment of men, and I don't even know if that's what he represents. He that's what he says on the show. I don't know that for sure. I'm just saying. He I don't know him. Being the devil. He loves it. That's what he lives. That's the space that he lives in. Totally. Yeah, exactly. So that's how I feel about it. I mean, we all can represent what that we at the beginning of the show. <laughs> What'd you say, Ashley? He did preface that at the beginning of the show. I think he he does sometimes say things just to kind of be contrary. Sometimes yeah. he's a contrarian, <laughs> and I tell people that all the time. Stop even. It's it's he's a contrarian. Stop. Andrea, you know. She, you say you you're talking from a real life perspective. This is what you do. You are not trying to, you know, he, he's a contrarian. That's what it is. <laughs> he would cut all of us out if he was on here right. <laughs> he would stop oh. us. 
he would stop us. We wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to get this conversation out. You know, I, I hope he watches it back and be like, Yeah, oh, I almost want to call Anton Kahn. I'm not done with him. It's like, you know, it's, like <laughs> it's like one more sparring match before we wrap up. I feel good. <laughs> It's a gunshot or is those slap, Jay? I'm confused. Which one is it? You know, I'm gunshots. Okay, we were talking about the gunshots yeah, earlier. Shots fired. <laughs> shots fired. I love it. I don't care. <laughs> you know, it's good to have different women and different perspectives, right? I mean, I, I, you know, Andrea, you just at a point in your life where it's like you don't care about being judged. I mean, Andrea, what, what, you, what you articulate was kind of like what. I think we all were talking about when you're at a different stage of your life, you do like you date yeah. different. It's like, you know, you absolutely know what you expect out of someone. So it's nothing wrong. That's great to know because a lot of people still are trying to, it's almost like we know what we don't want, but we still trying to figure out what we do want. Right. You sound like you know exactly what you do want. It's easy to say uh, what I don't no. want. She's still looking. She's still, she's still searching. Yeah. But I mean, think about it. it's, it's part of the journey though. Like, I know it's on some positivity shit, but the thing is, I feel like in life, life is a journey. It's about going it down the path and stuff, and this is all necessary. And, you know, B-Nix, I was talking to one of my good girlfriends uh, this morning, and uh, some years ago, somebody asked me um, to write down what you are looking for, and I've never done that. Mm. I don't know what I'm looking for in a partner. I don't know what I'm looking for in a man. But I do know what I'm not looking for. But I haven't put it out there. <laughs> but I haven't put it out there because I've been so busy working hard that I really haven't been, especially since I had a kid so young. Well, it's not a priority. It's, it's not, not a priority. Really a priority. Mm -hmm. If it's a yeah. priority for you, you will put more focus into it right because yeah. then that's what your that's your goal and that's what you want to do but right now it's not a goal so you yeah. Probably won't, yeah i mean but it's more important to focus on the things that you do need in a partner versus the things you don't need because that list can get out of hand and, and really get real critical but the things that I'm you do scared to make the list <laughs> that's why i haven't made it i'm scared to make the list i don't want to uh and I know it's things about me that um, men definitely don't dig. I'm hella outspoken, but I don't. I do not argue with a man. Men I dated know that I'm not gonna argue with them. I mean, I may say my piece, and I will talk like we're on this podcast. I'm gonna talk and say what I gotta say. But if I was talking to my man, I'm gonna sit there and be silent. And all I'm gonna do is drink my cocktail and go out and do hood rest shit with my friends. He gonna really hate that more. He gonna be like, this bitch, I'd rather her argue with me. Some people really like to argue. Some people like to be confrontational. Some people like to, and I really can't do it. All I wanna oh, do is cook. Feminine energy right there. Fuck. Uh, make money I'm not arguing nobody listen listen conflict conflict is okay what i'm more i'm more you wondering why do you okay I, I, why does she avoid conflict i i think conflict is is natural is normal and i don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing and i do no. think you have I to think it's, it's necessary it's necessary and i think you have to know how to constructively um address I'm conflict. Scared, but and if you don't know how to, i'm scared but but andrea being dismissive is not addressing conflict so when your man talking, you just drinking your wine and ignoring him. That is not. That's like that, a that, that'll get you. Like me, if my man do that to me, like it's it's gonna be some, some fire <laughs> under this. Like I'm gonna be so dis. I feel disrespected. So I do I'm think. That, okay. <laughs> I think. Yeah. That, I think it's 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 good for you to learn how to address conflict in a healthy way, and I think you're maybe right. you're afraid to address it because you have had so many negative experiences, but. There is healthy ways to deal with conflict, and um, avoiding it is not to me the, the best thing. If that's just no, you know my right. two cents. Yeah, and with, two that, with that this week, you are so right. And I said I was going to work on that avoiding. I avoid conflict with friends, family, lovers. I just avoid conflict. They can say whatever they want to say, and I'd be like, I could, well, you know what? Because I used to just go crazy and be like, and now. I just be like, 
you more chill. Well, I don't know. Ashley, like Ashley, I think you had picked up on what I when we were talking earlier about the accountability thing. That was the part I interpret about like calling someone out. But the thing is, like, hey, if you are just not respond, it's like, hey, we gotta talk through this. So I'm yeah. not saying that yeah. the accountability piece always gotta be something negative. It's essential to us to be able to grow. If nobody's saying anything, we don't grow in a relationship and people continue to go on this divergent path. If folks can't come together and, and hash it out and talk through it, but it has to be both ways. Like you know, that's a sign, if a that's man a can do it, a woman should be able to go back and forth. Like, hey, I'm going to call you on some shit too. So maybe I misinterpreted the whole accountability thing. But for me, it was the accountability is the conversation, being present. And being what able to speak do, out Ashley? about shit that I just ain't feeling. What you say, honey? What, what should I heard, we do, Ashley? What should we do? Well, like, I'm all for like? I'm all for communicating. Like I think conflict is inevitable, and relationships do grow out of conflict. But I don't. I wouldn't say it's necessary, but it's inevitable, um, and it's gonna happen. So you gotta know how to address it. You gotta know how to speak your piece, but also be able to listen. Um, and I think that's where a lot of people struggle with. Um, and I think that if, when you are like, not everything needs to be discussed. Sometimes like we need to kind of like take it in stride because you can't make an issue about every little thing. But there are things that you're going to have to talk about, like those rough, hard conversations. You're going to have to just kind of um, stick it out. And really, if you're with somebody that really cares about you and about the relationship, then they're going to want to communicate, you know, and they're going to want to hear you out as well as speak their piece. So it's like, I get what you're saying. You don't want to, you were trying to say like, you, it's not like you like to be combative, you know, but I don't think, and you don't want to be combative, but you do have to be open to um, communicating and not being like, don't keep your, don't keep what bothers you in, because eventually it's going to manifest. Like, you know what I mean? It's going to manifest and it's going to be worse. So I think sometimes people communicate by not communicating. Because when you don't communicate at all, like that's, that sends messages that you don't care, that you've yeah. checked out. Or and we, it's and we assume that people know what you're thinking. That is not always the case. But yeah. we assume just because we with this person, like, well, Andrea, you know how I am. It's like, in this yeah. situation, I really don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. You know? I mean, just to me, just name a relationship in your life where you haven't had to resolve conflict. Like my mother, my kids, my family. If there is no relationship where I have not had conflict that I've had to resolve. And there's respectful ways to do it. And there's disrespectful ways. I think when we learn how to effectively resolve conflict, then you're not afraid to address it. It's like, OK, you know, I know how to deal with conflict. It's fine. But people only run from it when they don't know, like when they cannot, they don't have like a level or they can't, they just go from one level to the next. It's like, I'll have an in-between. I don't know how to get from this. this yeah. that, that's when, that's when I notice that people say, I can't deal with conflict at all. Cause like, I'm going to kill her. Like, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We jump from you know, yeah. this to this, you know? But so, y'all don't send me no invoice. For this uh, council session, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was already having my assistant type it up already. Yeah, I already know. I already know. He was. I'm happy to get the email. 